All right, we are live on social media with our newest edition of Wealthy and Wise Wednesdays, my weekly podcast where I share a few words of financial wisdom to help put you back in the driver's seat of your financial future. Today is Wednesday, June 2nd. Thanks for joining me this morning. Today, we're going to be talking about the financial state of the union for the year 2021. And I can't wait to share this information with you. But first, our standard disclaimer. Um, just need to make a note that while I am a personal financial consultant and an investment advisor representative, what I discuss on these podcasts is not to be taken as personalized financial advice. Rather, this podcast series is about providing you, my dear viewer, with the information and the resources to increase your financial education and your financial literacy so you can make decisions that feel right to you. Now, today I have a partner in this financial education, and it's the website truthinaccounting.org. Now, Truth in Accounting is a 501c3 nonprofit. They're committed to educating and empowering citizens with understandable, reliable, and transparent government financial information. Their motto or, or their mantra, so to speak, is that in order to be knowledgeable participants in their government and in its budget process, American citizens need truthful and transparent financial information. So in April, the Truth and Accounting website released what they call their financial state of the union for the year 2021. Now, the data that they quote that I'm about to share with you is derived from a, an official report, the financial report of the U.S. government for fiscal year ending September 30th, 2020. So let's go to the actual report. I'm going to bring it up here and just read this to you. Uh, and by the way, if you want a copy of this report, just direct message me here on social or just comment below and I can send that to you. No charge, just a PDF form. Um, and it's just two or three pages. It just gives a, um, a really broad overview that's easy to understand and very, very interesting if you like this kind of stuff. So jumping into the report here, a new analysis of the latest available audited financial reports found that the U.S. government's overall financial condition worsened by nearly $10 trillion just one year. In just the last year alone, the financial condition worsened by nearly $10 trillion. Now, they admit that the coronavirus pandemic and the related stimulus packages caused some of that deterioration because the government had to borrow money to weather the pandemic. But here's the point. If the federal government, if they were fiscally responsible, if they were properly prepared for a crisis with a true rainy day fund, they wouldn't have had to borrow the money like this. Now, our measure of the government's financial condition, how do we measure it? Well, it includes reported federal assets, reported federal liabilities, as well as the promised but unfunded Social Security and Medicare benefits. Now, we have elected officials and also non-elected officials who are very influential in the decisions that are made in the government. Now, they've made repeatedly really bad financial decisions that have left the federal government with a debt burden of $123 trillion when you include the unfunded Social Security and Medicare promises. That equates to nearly $800,000 of a tax burden for each and every federal taxpayer. Now, because the federal government would need such a vast amount of money from each individual taxpayer to cover this debt, it receives a letter grade of F for its financial condition. Big surprise there, right? I, I know. Now, the Treasury Department only includes $175.3 billion of Social Security and Medicare liabilities on the federal balance sheet. But according to government documents, recipients do not have the right to these benefits beyond the benefits that are currently being paid. And guess what? Laws to reduce or stop future benefits <clears throat> can be passed at any time. So their analysis includes $55.12 trillion in unfunded Medicare benefits and $41.2 trillion in unfunded Social Security benefits. Um, so again, just to summarize with some fast facts, or if you're just joining me and tuning in, 
The federal government has $6 trillion in assets compared to $129 trillion worth of bills. We are underfunded by $123 trillion. We are broke. <laughs> the outcome, that $123 trillion shortfall breaks down to a tax burden of $796,000 per federal taxpayer. So that means that each taxpayer would have to pay $796,000 to get the U.S. government out of debt. And again, if you want the support, just comment below or direct message me on social. I can send it to you. There's no charge. It's just a three-page PDF. Um, and it's just very interesting. And it's not like so confusing that you wouldn't be able to understand it. Um, it has a breakdown of the level of assets that the government has, what the federal government owes as far as Medicare benefits, Social Security promises, publicly held debt, military and civilian retirement benefits, and then other liabilities, and that total, the total debt, and then the net position. And then it has like a pie chart of, you know, as far as the tax revenue that came in, what percentage was from corporate taxes, what percentage was from personal income tax, what percentage was from excise tax, estate tax, gift taxes, things of that nature. And then it has another pie chart as far as, as, far as government spending, what went out, what percentage was defense and veteran affairs? What percentage was social security? What percentage was health and human services? What percentage was education? Even what percentage was interest on the national debt? So it has it all broken down. And again, when you look at everything, total revenue, total expenses, uh, net operating costs, and then other changes in net position, including increases in the liabilities for social security and Medicare, um, it shows the decline in net position nearly, <clears throat> excuse me, nearly $10 trillion in just one year. So um, it's bad. Now, if you want, if you're interested and you're curious about learning more, the website doesn't just stop at the federal level. They also provide financial information for all 50 states and the 75 largest cities in our country. Spoiler alert, we owe money everywhere. So where are we going to get this money? Well, are they going to get the money from people who don't have any money or from the people who do? If you have money or if you make money, considering the financial state of the union, isn't there a big target on your back? Isn't the media and the government, aren't they stoking class warfare at, at every turn, right? Creating that divide between the haves and the have nots. And isn't that their goal? Isn't that their goal to divide us? But just looking fiscally speaking, if you have money or if you make money, they're going to be coming after you in order to recoup their net position. And they just told us to our faces. The current administration just told us that they're going to raise taxes and they make it sound like they're only going to raise taxes on the rich, only on families making $400,000 or more. Well, guess what? That's a lie. The Wall Street Journal just came out and published an article saying that they dug into this tax bill and it's actually going to affect families making half that. So household incomes of $200,000. Now you might be, maybe you're not in that group, but guess what? You're not a dummy. You're not sitting there thinking, oh, this isn't going to affect me because you know what it is going to affect? It's going to affect businesses. It's going to affect their cash flow. It's going to affect the amount that they raise prices and they're going to pass those prices on to the consumers. And guess what? If it is shrinking their profit margin, that could very well affect your job. So I know that uh, you're a concerned citizen. And the other thing is when they raise taxes, it's always a slippery slope, isn't it? Maybe today it's affecting families that make $200,000 a year, but five years from now, maybe it affects families that make $150,000 a year. And then at that point, maybe you are included. Maybe 10 years from now, maybe these tax rates, or these increased tax rates affect families making $100,000 a year household income. So now maybe you fall under that category and maybe it does affect you. So, um, you know, very concerning here. And so doesn't it make sense that when you are saving and investing for the future, doesn't it make sense to utilize vehicles that will allow you to build as much wealth as you can off the radar of the IRS for income tax purposes? That's my specialty. It's helping to divorce the IRS from your retirement plan. And you really need to think about this. You know, I wanna help you keep more of what you've rightfully earned. 
there's nothing patriotic about paying excessive and unnecessary income tax. And look, I'm talking about tax avoidance here, not tax evasion. <laughs> there's a big difference, right? Tax evasion is illegal. Tax avoidance is utilizing and understanding the rules, regulations, and guidelines within the Internal Revenue Code that's going to help you keep more of what you've earned. And the thing with the tax code is the tax code is written to incentivize people to act in certain ways. That's why there are so many tax breaks for real estate, for example, to provide housing. That's why there are so many tax breaks for businesses, for example, to provide jobs. But as just an individual consumer, we have to understand the tax code that will allow us to accumulate money tax-free and to be able to withdraw that money tax-free. So let's take advantage of that. So for insure, we're going to uh, increase taxes. And like I said, they already told us right to our faces that that's the plan. And so we're beginning to see that now. But guess what? That won't be enough. So you know what else they're going to do? They're also going to employ the stealth tax, the stealth tax. They're going to destroy the purchasing power of money. What am I talking about? They're going to turn on the printing presses and they're going to keep them running around the clock. And I know, I know they've already been doing it, but you haven't seen anything yet because they're going to bump it up to the next level. They're going to bump it up a notch. And so all consumers are seriously affected by inflation, rich, poor, Middle class, doesn't matter where you're at. Everybody is infected, or excuse me, infected. Yeah, it's infection. Yeah, it's a disease. Money printing is a disease. But everybody is affected by inflation. And again, we're already seeing it. We just heard that this last 12 month cycle, ending in April of 2021, it is the highest increase in inflation since the 2008 financial crisis. Again, the highest increase in inflation since the 2008 financial crisis. So not only are you going to have less dollars due to increased taxes, but those dollars that you're able to keep, they won't go as far because of inflation. So with less discretionary dollars to utilize, we have got to get more efficient. We've got to get more efficient with the dollars that we have. How? By using leverage. Yesterday, I posted some video content about positioning your money so that $1 can do the work of many dollars. Look, what is the conventional financial planning, uh, conventional wisdom or financial planning? What does it tell you to do? It tells you to spread out your money all over the place. You've got your workplace 401k plan over here. You've got your IRA retirement plan over here. You've got your kid's college savings plan and a 529 over here. Well, guess what? All of those plans are super restrictive. And if you need that money for a different cause, or if you need that money sooner, guess what? You're hit with a bunch of taxes and with a bunch of penalties. So it's just too restrictive and too inefficient to spread out all of your money and all of these different government-sponsored and government-controlled programs, especially when they have control and they can implement taxes and penalties on you. But if we can get you in a position to use leverage, where your dollars are liquid, where you can access your money at any time, for any reason, to tackle a variety of situations, whatever life throws at you, with no restrictions, no penalties, no government telling you that you can't touch the money until you're 59 and a half years old, or that you have to start withdrawing money when you're 72 years old, or that you have to use that money for college, and if you don't use it for college, or if your child doesn't go to college, you get penalized. So I'm talking about getting focused and about using leverage and getting more efficient with your dollars and to keep more of your savings, more of your hard-earned dollars for yourself instead of paying unnecessary and excessive income tax to the IRS. So if you want to check out that instructional video that I'm referencing, it's only about five minutes. Just let me know and I can send it over to you. Or you know what? I think I'll just put it in the comment section below when I'm done with the podcast here in a minute. And that way you can just uh, log in and, and watch it at your own leisure. Look, there's a lot at stake right now. We live in very challenging times. We have record inflation, rising taxes. The stock market is very volatile. Cryptocurrency is all over the place. And interest rates are so low that it's incredibly difficult to earn any real yield on safe money investments. But the good news is this, 
you still have time to make a decision. You still have time to take action and I can help. All you have to do is just send me a message here on social or email me at ronald.sneller at snellerfinancial.com. Also, go over to my YouTube channel and subscribe to me there at Sneller Financial on YouTube. I post a lot of educational and, and informative content uh, about all things finances. Well, look, this is uh, this has kind of gone on long enough here. We're at the 15 minute mark. And so that's all we've got time for here today. I hope you found this to be educational and informative. Uh, and again, if you want a copy of that report, just comment below and let me know and I'll get it over to you. That's today's rant. And as always, thanks for listening.